So a parametric curve is just a fancy name for a function from R1 into Rn. And it's just a generalization of our usual space curves that we've seen. And we write, instead of this f function, we'll say x of t to indicate that we're taking some position in space, in dimensional space. x1 of t, x2 of t. So these are the component functions, xn of t. And we'll say that t is the parameter. And the xi functions, we call coordinate functions. Because they're the, they're the uh, coordinates of our trajectories. So let's do an example. Our first example is a spiral curve. It's going to be t cosine of 2 pi t t sine of 2 pi t and we draw this as we normally do so I'm going to say that this is x1 and this is x2 and of course it looks a little sloppy because this is our interface our first point is at t is equal to 0 x of 0 is exactly 0, 0, because I have 0 times cosine. Normally this would be cosine of 0, which is 1. But since I have the t there, that's now 0, it's 0. Here I've got another 0, so I have a point 0, 0. At x of 1 fourth, we have exactly cosine of 2 pi divided by 4 is cosine of pi over 2, which is 0. So this term will be 0. And the second coordinate is going to be 1 fourth times sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So we get 0, 1 fourth. x of 1 half is going to be, now I flip, I'm going to get negative 1 half here. So I'll get negative 1 from the cosine of pi that I'll get here. And then I'll multiply that by 1 half. And then I'll have 0 in the second coordinate. x of 3 fourths. Similarly, we compute, and we're going to obtain 0, comma, negative 3 fourths. And finally, x of 1 is going to be equal to 1, 0. So we plot a bunch of those points. So 0, 0 is the first point. Uh, 0, 1, 4. Negative 1, half 2. 0, negative 3 halves, and then 1 here. And we can draw this roughly like that. So it's, it's curving out roughly, and it'll just keep curving like this on and on. And roughly you get the idea. Now, this gives us the posi position of something at a particular time. For example, maybe we're driving a car along this path, and this is a map of the country, and we want to see where our car is at a particular time. That's great. It tells you the position. But you can also compute the velocity if you know the position function of this curve. So the velocity is determined by the derivative of this curve dx over dt of t. And how do we take this derivative? Well, we just take the derivative with respect to t of each of the coordinate functions. So 
So this will be equal to, the first coordinate is the derivative of t times cosine 2 pi t. I apply the product rule, and I get cosine of 2 pi t minus t, or 2 pi t, rather, 2 pi t sine of 2 pi t. That's my first coordinate of the velocity. And then I have sine of 2 pi t plus 2 pi t cosine of 2 pi t. And this tells me the velocity of that particle or the rate of change of that particle as I vary the parameter t. Another interesting way to view this is that it tells me the tangent line to the curve at a particular point. So let's look at the point t is equal to 1 fourth. Well, we already know that x of 1 fourth is equal to 1 fourth. But if we plug in 1 fourth to dx of dt, we'll get a 0 from the cosine. We'll end up with a negative pi over 2 here and a 1 here. Negative pi over 2, 1. And this is a vector. And the tangent line at this point then, oh, sorry, this is a, this, sh this should be 0, 1 fourth. So this is a point on the line, and this is the direction. And so my line, or my tangent line at this point, we'll call it uh, V of S now, so that we don't confuse what the parameter we have for the curve, is going to be 0, 1 fourth, that is, it starts off at 1 fourth, plus s times my direction vector, negative pi over 2, 1. And if you draw this, it starts at 1, at one fourth, and it's going to be roughly, it's going to be exactly tangent to this curve. It's going to basically kiss that, the curve at that point. And this is, this is how we'll draw it. So it tells us the velocity, and it also tells us the tangent line to this curve at that point. Let's do another example, something a little more pathological. This is actually a really nice example, really well behaved. But there are curves that are a little more complicated. And so it's nice to know, uh, nice to have a language to discuss. So I'm going to say x of t now is equal to 2 times t minus sine of t 1 minus cosine t. And you might ask, well, how am I going to graph this? Well, you'll graph, if you graph the points, and we'll not go into the details of this, this looks like this interesting function here. So I've got a 4 here. Over here, say I've got 4 pi. And what I'll do is I'll start here, and it'll jump up and hit that point, hit that line at one point, and then it comes right back down, and then it goes right back up. And this is called a cycloid. This curve is a cycloid. It's actually a very interesting curve. It actually tracks if you uh, if you track the point on a, a point, a particular point on a wheel as it rolls through space, that point will trace out a cycloid. It's a very interesting shape. It has a very interesting properties. You should look it up on Wikipedia. Well, we can compute the derivative of this thing. That is the velocity. dx dt, very simply, is going to be equal to, and it's easy to compute this, 1 minus cosine t negative sine of t. And you know, if I, I could also take the derivative of this derivative, because again, this is just another space curve, this is just another parameterized curve, and that would give me the acceleration. And then I could take uh, the third derivative, and that gives me something called uh, the jerk. And the, uh, the next few derivatives after that, I believe are snap, crackle, and pop, which is kind of fun. But not 
completely useful. So at t is equal to 2 pi now, so I'm going to set t equal to 2 pi. Note that dx dt is equal to 0, 0. And what happens to this at 2 pi? Well, at 2 pi, this is going to be exactly 4 pi. So x is equal to, well, it's not exactly 4 pi. It's a, a 0 in the x1 direction. Well, no, it's 0 in x2 and 4 pi in x1. So that's exactly this point right here. That's exactly that point. And the derivative dies here. It's completely zero. It vanishes. And that kind of indicates that this is a weird point. There are other points where the derivative will vanish, and that'll be here. The derivatives vanish at kind of interesting extreme points or at these points that we'll call cusps. And cusps are kind of badly behaved points. And so, in general, when we talk about curves, we want to avoid cusps because they cause problems, just like zeros cause certain problems. And so, definition, a curve is regular if and only if x of t is continuous. That is, I can take limits and everything's fine. And x, and we'll write prime instead of dx dt. That's just simpler to write. Does not equal the zero vector for all t.